Science, Innovation and Technology, the Right Honourable Michelle Donovan, MP! Thank you and good evening, COGX 2023. What an amazing celebration of UK's thriving tech sector we've had over the last few days. And my goodness, do we have a great deal to celebrate. Thanks to some of the brightest, the boldest, and the best of the UK's world-class tech sector talent, we have done some extraordinary things since last year's COGEX Festival. In the short period of time that the UK became one of just three countries on the planet with a tech sector worth over $1 trillion, making us the only country to sit alongside the USA and China in reaching this incredible milestone. In nominal terms, the value of our digital sector alone is now worth more than the entire UK's GDP in 1970. It is testament to our universities, to our startups, and to our investors and our tech campuses, our regional clusters, and above all, to the spirit of innovation that is alive and well in Britain today and, of course, here at COGEX. Because while dollars and pounds might be the easiest way to measure the success of tech, I actually think that when we talk about having the third most valuable tech sector in the world, we are in fact talking about people. The real value in UK tech is in each and every one of you. Whether you are doing incredible things now or have ambitions to do incredible things in the future, the skills and the determination of the people in this room are what makes the UK one of the most valuable economies in the world. Even without the record-breaking figures and rankings to hand, you only need to look at Apple's new gleaming UK headquarters in Battersea or Google's headline-grabbing purchase of Central St. Giles to confirm London's status as a global tech powerhouse. London is undergoing a tech economy transformation comparable to the financial boom of the 1980s, one that is bringing talent of every nationality and background to the unique city. But the thousands of British businesses attending COGETS remind us that the tech sector's unstoppable march extends far beyond the boundaries of our nation's capital. In the Northeast, Britain's very first app-based lender, Atom Bank, is creating a world-leading banking machine on Google's cloud platform out of its Durham headquarters. In Northern Ireland, a thriving tech scene has attracted big international players, and Belfast ranks amongst our top 10 cities for capital investment. And in Wales, we have seen world-leading semiconductor clusters like CS Connected, driving innovation in a technology used in nearly every single mobile phone on the market today. It is because of this wholly UK philosophy that we have produced more billion dollar tech companies than France, Germany, and Sweden combined. In fact, we are now home to twice as many AI companies as any other European nation. But this is only the beginning. We are on a, the cusp of a tech revolution that we haven't seen since the birth of the internet. Some think this revolution will be the biggest technological advance in human history. Of course, I'm speaking about AI. As the UK's first technology secretary, I have implemented both bold new policies that have put the UK on track to become a true science and technology superpower by 2030. AI will be crucial to that mission. I know I don't need to tell an audience like you what that kind of transformational effect will have on our lives. Just a few months ago, 
you will have seen that an AI model was used to discover a new drug for liver cancer in the space of just 30 days. Not long after, companies unveiled AI models that could predict the weather with the same degree of accuracy as the whole of our existing weather model monitoring systems. And they did it 10,000 times faster. The speed of progress is nothing like we have ever seen before. In the space of a single human lifetime, humanity progressed from the horse and cart to launching man into space. We are now seeing a comparable transformation in the field of AI, but occurring in under a decade. Five years ago, the most advanced AI could barely write coherent sentences. Today, they can instantly generate stunning art. They can ace the bar exam and use tools as we ourselves do. Even in the last 24 hours, I have announced new multi-million pound funding for cancer research projects, including one at King's College London, which is using AI to read lung scans and more accurately predict lung cancer resistance to treatments. However, if we want to take the lead in AI, if we want to lead this transformative technology, we do have to be the first to take the lead and make it safe and reliable. There is a reason why we happily send ourselves 30,000 feet in the air on a plane with two people we've never met at the controls. It is because flying has been made extraordinarily safe by years of engineering advances, regulation, and standards that have given consumers the confidence that they need to fly around the world without a second's thought. Without these guardrails, there simply would not be an airline industry. And the same is, of course, true of AI. Safety is going to be the determining factor in the race to become the world's leader in AI innovation. And we here in the UK are not waiting for that starting gun. We don't want AI to be successful despite our regulation. We want it to be successful because of our regulations. But the reality is that we don't have years to play with. The stakes are too high, and the technology is moving too fast for us to learn from our mistakes as they happen. When it comes to AI, we need to take action to make AI safe before something goes wrong, not after. And what's more challenging is the action needs to be able to keep pace with any change that comes around the corner. We need to be prepared to predict, to understand, and to mitigate the things that no one has even thought of yet. My vision for the UK is to be the global center of AI safety, a place where companies at the frontier know that the guardrails are in place of them to seize the benefits of AI whilst mitigating the risks. We are delivering on that vision through our Frontier AI Task Force, chaired by leading tech entrepreneur Ian Hogarth. Just as the COVID vaccine task force made us one of the first countries in the world to roll out a working COVID vaccine, this task force is on track to make the UK the strongest and the most agile in the world when it comes to AI safety. Our task force is now recruiting heavy hitting expertise to guide and to shape its work, including Turing Prize winner Joshua Bengio and GC, uh, GCHQ, director Anne Keast Butler. It is partnering with leading technical organizations, including ARC Evals and the Center for AI Safety to better understand the risks of frontier AI systems. And it is engaging with the leading AI companies themselves, including Google DeepMind, OpenAI, and Anthropic. We are collaborating and sharing access and they are collaboratively sharing access to their models for vital safety research. As the challenges of AI change, so too will the task force. We are growing those expertise, we are growing that technical ability of the team, moving towards a more permanent and perhaps even international and institutional structure in the future. We see the UK as the home of AI safety, and by extension, the home of AI itself. 
But while Britain intends to lead, AI, of course, knows no geographical boundaries, and nor should our approach, because we need to act globally to tackle the challenges and, of course, reap those rewards. I plan to build on the momentum gained through the work of the UN, the OECD, the Global Partnership on AI, and the G7 Hiroshima process. COGETS is a great example of the extraordinary breadth of international talent and expertise that is coming together to solve these problems. I firmly believe the government needs to take a leaf out of industry's book and match international collaboration on AI and AI safety. That is why it is so significant that the UK is hosting the world's first AI Safety Summit at the historic Bletchley Park later this year where, of course, Alan Turing famously cracked the Enigma code and laid the foundations of modern computer science and the digital age. But actually, really couldn't be a more fitting venue to host world leaders along with frontier AI organizations and eminent thinkers in the drive to rapidly target international action. At the summit, which is just 50 days away, we plan to identify and agree on the risks, find ways of collaborating on research and safety regulation, and establish how to make AI a force for good in people's lives. Every country has a role to play in helping to ensure that AI makes our world better, safer, and more united than ever before. The summit comes at a critical moment as we face uncertainty in what may emerge as the frontier of this technology is pushed further and capabilities are quickly scaled up. This is one of the reasons why I am inviting AI developers to draw on their expertise to help steer safety policies in the right direction and to put forward their plans for responsible capability scaling. Responsible capability scaling means stating what the risks are going to be that are monitored who is notified if these risks are found, and at what level of danger the developer would then slow that down or in fact pause their work until better safety mechanisms are in place. Responsible capability scaling at the frontier of AI needs to be as commonplace as having a smoke alarm in your kitchen. Companies pushing the frontier toward, forward need to have that smoke alarm in place to develop public trust. And of course, this should be coupled with collaborative transparency between AI developers and government. The opportunities that lie before us truly are enormous. Those who lead on AI safety will lead on AI, and they will unlock the enormous benefits that come with it. To help us to find cures for diseases that we never thought were treatable, to provide faster, safer, greener ways to travel, free us from thousands of hours of work lost to menial tasks while creating the high-skilled, highly paid jobs of our economy that we need and letting us focus on work that we truly enjoy. And it is the UK that needs to seize these opportunities with both hands. Now, before I conclude, I want to leave you with one thought about the year ahead in technology, and AI especially. Early on in his career, while he was developing the cutting-edge tech behind Apple computers, Steve Jobs was inspired by the efficiency of locomotion. He looked at studies evaluating how much energy it takes for birds to travel from A to B, then the same for goats, then the same for mice, then cows, and so on, and finally, human beings. It turns out that for all our brains and our ingenuity, human beings come in about a third of the way down that list of efficiency. We only narrowly beat sheep for how efficiently we can carry out this basic task, with the condor ranking number one. However, when that same test is run on humans with a bicycle, the results are remarkably different. Humans then become far more efficient in fact, the most efficient creatures on the planet, twice as good as the condor. 
Jobs viewed this as an analogy for the personal computer, acting as a tool to enhance human creativity and minimize bureaucracy. For me, this is the perfect illustration of how we should see AI and other breakthrough technologies. Not as tools to replace human thought, but instead as tools to elevate it, to amplify it, that drives up our productivity, that frees us to realize the most creative of our ambitions. By putting safety first, AI can become tomorrow's bicycle of the mind, helping us to live longer, to live happier, to live healthier and more fulfilling lives than ever before in human history. That is the future that lies before us. And it is this government that will work hand in hand with the very best researchers, the very best experts, and the very best innovators of our generation so that we can realize this future together. Thank you.